Okay, Power Pie. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I just want you guys to know, as long as you're watching these, I'm going to keep doing them. And um, I know we don't get a lot of likes on there, but I know we got a lot of people that watch them. So I understand. I'm there for you. And the only reason why I'm doing them, I'm doing them for you. If you like the meat of the word, you're probably watching this. And I'm doing them for me. Because I got things I want to get out. And this is right now the only avenue I have. So anyway, <clears throat> today's going to be a little bit different because a friend of mine inspired me to just do some. She wanted to hear some uh, Hagen stories. And uh, she suggested I put them down and stuff like that. Well, I was like, OK, that sounds like a good idea. And But then I, I realized I didn't want to just put them down. I just want to put them in the video, too. So that way. We can have them, um, I can have them for my kids, really, so that they may see them someday. But I didn't want to just do Brother Hagen. I will do him in the next one, but because he's a lot, there's a lot more stories I have for him that I've experienced. These are my experiences. And, but I do want to start out with uh, Brother Summerall because I actually heard about Brother Summerall before I heard about Brother Hagen. And this was back in 1996. 1987 when I first got involved with all this but jump forward to 2000 I believe it's 2002 I had a vision one morning I was on staff at Word of Life and I was praying and I can show you where it was that's how real this was and it, it's still alive today the vision is and I was walking up and down an aisle and I saw on the ground in the spirit, I saw these footsteps. And inside the footsteps, I could see where there was some. Um, this was, again, like 2002. And Brother Hagen was still alive, and my pastor, you know, was one of my, one of the fathers of my faith also. But I looked down into these steps. It was a dirt path. And every time I took a step, I took a step in one of those steps. And as I looked down, I saw signatures like literal autographs i saw smith wigglesworth and then i saw Les summerall and see they had already passed away so then so there's this dirt path and on the side of the path is forest and trees and grass and and it represents the earth but there were also trees that were alive and big there were small trees there were actually dead trees that had died and fallen to the earth and of course, those represented people in my life that had come and gone, that are still here, still young, still old. And on the path, I could see the end where it faded into, I guess, what you might say, eternity. There's four steps left, and, and Brother Hagen had four steps. And in between Brother Hagen and, and, and me was, was Pastor Sam. So then, um, a year later, four seasons on the earth, Brother Hagen passed away. And of course, you know, there's some people you kind of miss them being on the earth. And Brother Hagen, you know, is definitely one of those people. But again, Wigglesworth and Summerall were also in that vision. So these are the fathers of my faith that I've um, I've gleaned on. You know, Jesus, one more thing before we get on um, Summerall stories, one more thing that Jesus showed me or the Holy Spirit showed me, and this is, this is important. Whenever Peter cut the ear off of the Roman soldier, Jesus said something that was very powerful, and we kind of take, take it for granted, but he said, those who live by the sword die by the sword. Now, in its context, you can say those who live by the gun or the weapons they choose die by that. Okay. If you were a gun person, you might die by the gun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that might be your death. But in it, in a spiritual context, he's also saying that those who live by this message will also die by this message. 
So if you are a, you know, if you're a Baptist person, then you may die, you may die with the Baptist message. You may live, you'll live with that Baptist message. You choose to, that's what the weapon you choose to fight Satan with. Those who live by it, die by it. And see, those who live by the Spirit, die by the Spirit. They fight that fight. That's the fight that Jake that you've chosen excuse me and see these were the fights that i've chosen you know when god called me back in 1987 it was no it was may of 88 uh, I, one of the first things i told him was i want the best that you have for me it's now it may not be the best for someone else but even at an 18 year old or a 17 year old i was still i said i want you to have the best for me so what might be the best for me might not be the best for someone else. And this is where the fathers of my faith came in. This is where Lester Summerall came in. Matter of fact, it was during that time someone spoke a word about Smith Wigglesworth over my life. And that's part of it. I first heard of Summerall there at Word of Life. And Pastor Sam sat under him. He traveled to other nations with him, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm sure heard him talk about it and stuff like that. But then someone had that word over me about Smith Wigglesworth. And I never heard of Smith Wigglesworth. And I, and, and I was like, well, I guess I better find out who Smith Wigglesworth is. And when I got a book and I started reading about the things that Smith Wigglesworth did, the faith that he had was just, I mean, for someone who's young in the Lord, that's candy. Okay. Um, I mean, my goodness, God just doing things through his life and everything. So after I graduated from high school, I had a job here in town and I was working. And Dr. Summerall came through. And of course, Brother Sam would have him. It, it didn't matter. He would have him in any time he wanted to. So Brother Summerall came in. It was actually on a Friday night and I had to work. And of course, being a person of honor and integrity, you just don't want to take off work. You know, to go and, you know, you don't want to lie to go to church. <laughs> Say you're sick or something. <laughs> That's just not a good thing to do. But I I miss that. I miss that service. You know, <laughs> to this day, I'm like, man, I wish I would have been there. And, but I knew that God was going to honor my integrity. Okay. So I had missed that service. It was on the Friday night. And of course I was like, man, what? So later that year or um, either that, I think it was the same year. I think we're talking 1991. I moved to Tulsa to go to Bible school, to go to Rama. And lo and behold, Lester Summerall was speaking at Word Explosion there at Victory. And I ended up going to the service and of course, God started making that up. God started honoring that for me. Um, he was speaking at Word Explosion. I probably, I couldn't tell you what he spoke on. You know. But after graduating from Rhema, uh, the door opened for me to work at the TV station, at Dr. Summerall's TV station there. A friend of mine who I went to school with, he, he, was, uh, he was on staff there, and he hired me. We just... It was really to do a Saturday morning football show over to local um, high schools and stuff like that. So eventually, I was part-time, and then I moved full-time. And uh, that was really a blessing for me. I mean, this is actually my first ministry job. It's the first job I have working for ministry. And then we had, uh, let's see, we had morning devotions every morning there at the station. And we would just read a scripture or a chapter or something out of the Word. And during that time, uh, Dr. Summerall's program was on. He was still alive. He, and he and Brother Murray, his, um, I, believe brother, I believe it was Brother Murray. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But it was his brother-in-law. They would do the morning show and... I mean, Dr. Summerall get off on telling his stories and stuff like that, and devotions would be over. And there were times I'd just sit there and stand there and just watch. I loved hearing his stories. Stories, my goodness, the man could tell some good stories. 
and he really had a way of capturing your attention. You know, um, John Osteen was the same way back then, before. This was in the early 90s. No, it was in the mid-90s, excuse me. Like, um, 94, 95. So, Brother Osteen had a way of capturing your attention, telling those stories. You know, those old men could tell good stories. <laughs> so, I'd sit there and I'd watch, you know. And, um, I love hearing the stories again. He and Brother Murray would tell those stories. Um, one of the stories that he spoke about was with the bed moving across the room. He was in a hut in northern China or, or Morocco or whatever it is, Monaco, I think. No, Monaco's in Europe, but he was in Morocco, I think. And, and, a, and his bed started hopping across the room. And he woke him up in the middle of the night. Well, it was a demon moving his bed across the room. He just said, stop it. Put it back. And he rolled over and went to sleep. The next morning he woke up and his bed was back where it was. <laughs> the man believed in spiritual authority. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a similar experience. It wasn't, it wasn't a bed moving across the room. It was a spiritual presence I felt. I woke up in the middle of the night and, and um, it was just freezing. I mean, it, I was still young, 17, 18 years old. It was before all this with Brother Summerall, but I woke up and I'm just freezing in my room. I mean, just ungodly cold. And it was so cold that the inside of me was shaking. That's how cold it was. And I know, and I heard other people having that same experience or similar experience and um, either just demonic spirits or just Satan himself, you know. We say devil, we say Satan, we think it's one, but no, there's many. But anyway, back to Brother Summerall when I was working at the station. During that time, I ended up going to England and um, took a little pilgrim to Bradford where Brother Wigglesworth lived and died. And or they buried him, so we went to Bradford and or Leeds. Some, you know, they're both right by each other and and visited the Bradford Mission and um, it's, you know it's like a storeroom now building still there and uh, Brother Wigglesworth's wife passed away on the steps there and they took him they took her to his house and he raised her from the dead they chatted and he let her go and visited where Brother Wigglesworth is buried actually been there twice now and visited brother wigglesworth's home now we didn't go in or we, anything actually just um watch i just looked at it from across the street or from the sidewalk because um you know just didn't want to disturb people who live there now little did they know who lived there and saw the steps there were Smith Wigglesworth, you know, the story about him in the newspaper and and Lester Summerall and Wigglesworth turned him throw it, throw it in the, throw it away. You can't have that here. All right. So then um went there, visited while I was working for the station and the um, brother Summerall never visited the T V station. That was all under his son Pete. Pete was over the broadcasting department and Pete would visit once a month and everything. And uh, ran into Pete one time in Las Vegas, of all places, there at the NAB conference. And so, while I was working for Brother Summerall, it was a Sunday night that he was, uh, it was a Monday. I was there, I'm trying to remember everything, because these details were kind of important to me. We had, uh, he was speaking at a church up in Bartlesville. One of the churches, the pastors, was uh, associated with Lassie. And he had been speaking the night before at one of Billy Joe Daugherty's minister's conference there, Victory. Well, there was like 5,000 preachers that he was speaking to that Sunday night. 
And then Monday we worked and they told us Monday, they said, uh, Brother Wigglesworth, Brother Wigglesworth, Brother Summerall is going to be speaking at so-and-so's church. And I knew the pastor because we produced a show there at the TV station. He'd come in once or twice a month and we'd produce it and he'd it air there locally. And I think it may have even aired on the satellite network, but, um, you know, I didn't like missing an opportunity again to see Brother Summerall. And I'm like, all right, I'll go. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go. So we got off work in Bartersfield's maybe, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 miles somewhere. It's, you know, within an hour, so not, not too far. And yeah, I'd say 60 miles or so. So we all carpooled up there, got up there. Uh, we left about 5.30. I remember because I was tired <laughs> from working all day. Yeah, I remember being tired, but I'm like, no, I need to go see Brother Summerall. <laughs> so I want to go see Brother Summerall. And we get up there to the church, and church isn't that big. It's, it's a small church. Matter of fact, there was probably about 60 people in that church that night. And the night before, he preached to 5,000 preachers. That's what kind of a person he was, okay? He didn't care. Numbers didn't bother him one bit. Um, I know some young people. Numbers are important to them. No. Not the less summer. So they had actually, I've got a piece of paper. It's somewhere around here. They had reserved row two and row three for the staff. And I got in, it was someone beside me on the aisle. I can't remember who it was. And then it was myself and then other staff members all around us. And I'm standing there and we're doing praise and worship. And it had, there was a piece, that piece of paper that said summer all staff. That's what it said. And I took it with me. <laughs> and I'm standing there and Brother Summerall comes in and he, he looks at me and he's, he, you know, I'm, I, you know, I acknowledge him and he, he's sitting there and then he, um, he sits down in front of me and he opens up his Bible, opens up a piece of paper. And it, I mean, it, it was one scripture on there and, and the fonts were huge. He was, he was, his eyesight was very weak and, and this actually comes in play later because I met his grandson after he passed away. I met his grandson, uh, Lester Summerall also. And he said, yeah, my grandfather's eyesight's were, eyesight was going bad. He goes, he would make me sit there and, and read script, read scripture and et cetera, you know? Um, so anyway, and me and Lester got to know each other. We're acquaintances. I'll say that. So, you know, he preached and, he, pre he actually told some stories I'd heard, and I, I was I was so glad to hear him in person. Okay. So, and then we went back to Tulsa, went back, and then about five or six weeks later, I'm on stage. I'm, I'm volunteering at Rama Bible Church, and I'm on stage, and and Craig, Craig Hagen comes up, and he's like, hey, um, it was Sunday morning before service and he goes hey brother summerall passed away he goes um you know brother hagen got a phone call that he passed away so that's how i heard about him passing away so then um it was funny because they had a funeral on on the station was broadcasting live on there and i think it was broadcasting on um, Oral Roberts station too. Yeah, it was. And people were calling in, why is this funeral on here on these two stations? And yada, 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 I want to watch my TV show. And they were calling in and complaining about that. So, um, he passed away, you know, and, uh, even after his death, he still to this day has, a you know, of course an influence. I was, um, watching Rod Parsley, it may have been at his funeral, Rod Parsley was talking about and about his daughter, uh, um, talking to Les Summerall and asking, you know, have you ever been out of the country? You know, she was just, you know, four or five years old or something. She was, 
and he's like, yeah, 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 I've been out of the country and stuff like that. And and Rod said something that was interesting. He said uh, he was in the bathroom or something. He said, um, Brother Summerall would wipe down the counters. You know, water would get on the counters, and he would he'd take a towel and he'd wipe them down. You know, and that really showed the integrity of them. And I I picked that up, and I was um, there's. I don't do it all the time, but there is a particular bathroom at the church at Word of Life. And whenever I heard that story, I started wiping down that counter after using it because water would be on there. And to this day, by habit, by whenever I go in there to that same bathroom, and I by habit, it triggers me to wipe down that counter. It really does. So, um, just interesting stories there. Uh, the last thing I want to talk is about is the prophecy that Smith Wigglesworth had over Lester Summerall. He said that there was a, a movement coming that was going around the world. He said, I wouldn't see it, but you would. And I'd always, qu always question that because Dr. Summerall in the video when he was talking about Smith Wigglesworth alluded to that. And he said, I believe that it's still coming as to that he didn't see the movement. And I really think that it had a big part to do with his desire for broadcasting, that broadcasting the gospel around the world, whether it be shortwave or radio or television or um, through satellite was part of that movement. But recent things have triggered me to think differently because when Wigglesworth passed away, it was 1947. And in 1947 was the beginning of the Voice of Healing. Now, the Voice of Healing only lasted maybe a decade. I think it was a decade, 10 years. But the Voice of Healing produced ministries like, you know, Rama, Kenneth Hagin Ministries, um, Full Gospel Businessmen Movement, it, uh, was Gordon Lindsay and Christ for the Nations, uh, Oral Roberts and Oral Roberts University. It produced these ministries that have gone around the world didn't happen in that first 10 years but in another decade or so these ministries would produce people going globally such as myself and others and we are all fruits and results of that little revival slash outpour I don't think some are all missed it well, I think Summerall missed it a little bit, but I don't think Wigglesworth missed it. What Wigglesworth said about Summerall, you would see the movement that would go around. He did. In 1947, in the Voice of Healing, he started seeing that movement. Amen. So, I hope you're encouraged. Uh, I didn't want to cut that one short. It's Yes, it's a little long. It's We're at 23 minutes here, but I didn't want to do a two-parter on this one. If you want to watch the whole thing, then you watch the whole thing. That's your business. And I hope that blesses you guys. So be blessed and be encouraged.